Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Pale Blue Thoughts where I will attempt to explain concepts that encourage critical thinking in people. Thinking critically is a very important step on the way to having a scientific temper and that is why I am making videos explaining the various concepts of critical thinking. Critical thinking can help you better understand yourself and in turn help you avoid any kind of negative or limiting beliefs and helps you focus more on your strengths. In fact, for us to have a democracy and to fully understand scientific facts, we need critical thinking. Today we are bombarded by information from all sides. Then it becomes difficult to know what is right or false. That is exactly where we need to use our critical thinking skills and decide for ourselves what to believe. Critical thinking allows us to ensure that our opinions are based on the facts and help us sort through all that extra noise. So today I will introduce a critical thinking concept called Occam's Razor. Many may have heard about it, but I'm sure this may be new information for at least some of you. We often tend to make our lives more complex than it really is. We then sit and think how happy our lives would be if life were a little simpler. Also, when confronted with two options in life, how would you choose which one is better? Do you choose the complex solution or the simpler one? To give you an idea, let us assume that your friend has stopped calling you or texting you. Would it be right to assume that he or she is angry with you for something that you may have said or could it be that person is just busy with things? Now the same problem occurs in science too. When there are two theories supporting something, which one should you go for? That is the time you need to take out your Occam's razor to shave away unnecessary assumptions. This principle can be used to quickly find answers in many areas of life, both scientific and ordinary. Occam's razor finds importance in many fields of science ranging from evolutionary biology to probability theory to statistics to medical diagnosis, artificial intelligence and software development. If you read about Occam's razor on wiki, you may find it difficult to comprehend. So I will attempt to make it simple for you. And the more you share, the more people would be aware. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and demolishes pseudoscience. Although the true origin of Occam's razor is debatable, William of Occam, an English philosopher and theologian, historically gets the credit, mainly because of the writings of a Sir William Hamilton, a Scottish metaphysical philosopher who first coined the term Occam's razor. Let us try and understand this with a few examples. Suppose you are sitting on your couch one rainy evening and watching a scary movie. You suddenly notice through the corner of your eye a flash of light outside your window. Two theories come to your mind for what might have caused this. It is probably just lightning or it is a ghost that has come to attack you. While the movie you are watching may lead you to suspect a ghost, it is far more likely that the light was due to a lightning. The logical tool used to determine the cause of this light is called Occam's razor. Occam's razor is a problem solving principle which is used to eliminate improbable options in a given situation. Occam's razor says that among competing hypotheses, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. In simpler language, Occam's razor states that the simplest explanation is preferable to one that is more complex. Simple theories are easier to verify. Simple solutions are easier to execute. In other words, we should avoid looking for excessively complex solutions to a problem and focus on what works given the circumstances. In the example that I gave you, the solution that it was a lightning is simpler and hence more plausible given the weather conditions present. If you have to assume that it is a ghost, then you would have to make a whole lot of assumptions like life after death, soul, evil spirits, etc. Let us look at another example. You are in your bedroom and you hear the sound of something falling with a loud crash in the living room. You go to the room and you find that your child is standing there next to a vase which has fallen down and broken. You question him and he says it was a dog that knocked the vase down. But you don't see a dog around. So he says that the dog came in through the window and dropped the vase and went back through the window. But you say you had closed the windows and doors earlier. So he says the dog could open the window. The little guy could continue to make up hundred excuses to prove his innocence. So which story are you likely to believe? One option is that he broke the vase himself 
and the other option is to believe in a situation where a non-existent dog which could open windows came in and dropped the vase. If you apply Occam's razor here, you should reject the hypothesis which has more assumptions and come to conclude the simpler solution that the child broke the vase. Now let us apply the same principle to science. In fact, it has been used many times before in science to determine the authenticity of many theories. Let's look at a few. For centuries, many people believed that all planets and the sun moved around the earth. While people were trying to determine how the planets of the solar system moved, they had trouble explaining the retrograde motion, where planets appear to move backward. Ptolemy suggested geocentrism or the idea that the planets and suns move around the earth and the planets also move in their own individual circles on the rotations around the earth. It was like wheels within wheel system which was very complex. Then Copernicus explained retrograde motion with a far more simple heliocentric theory that was largely correct and the world adopted the model as being the best explanation. Retrograde motion was simply a perspective effect caused when the earth passes a slower moving outer planet that makes the planet appear to be moving backwards relative to the background stars. That problem solved using a simpler explanation. Scientists had to grapple with a different kind of motion. This time within the earth itself. People for long thought that the continents were static and that was how they were formed in the first place. But as we started to explore the earth more, we found series of fossils that were found in eastern Brazil and northwest African countries which belong to the same species. They were of extinct animals, so how could they be in two continents separated by miles of ocean? One theory suggested a series of land bridges across the ocean, but then as more and more fossils were found across the world, this theory became more complex. How many such bridges would have been there on earth? And then came Alfred Wegener. He noticed something curious when he looked at the map of the world. Wegener observed that the continents of South America and Africa looked like they would fit together remarkably well. Take away the Atlantic Ocean and these two massive landforms could lock neatly together. He hypothesized that all of the modern-day continents had previously been clumped together in a supercontinent he called Pangaea, and over millions of years, the continents had drifted apart. It was a simpler theory and it fit like a jigsaw puzzle to solve one more of the mysteries of the universe, again using the principle of Occam's razor. Go for the solution that lets you make the less assumptions. It has since been used by Einstein for his formulation of special relativity, development of quantum mechanics by Max Planck and John Dalton's atomic theory. It has also resulted in a better understanding of natural phenomena. For example, Isaac Newton's idea of light particles seemed simpler than Christian Huygens' idea of waves, so many favored it. At that time, all known waves propagated through a physical medium and it seemed simpler to postulate the existence of a medium which they called ether than to theorize about wave propagation without a medium. In this case, as it turned out, neither the wave nor the particle explanation alone suffices as light behaves like waves and like particles. The germ theory of disease is another example. Before it came along, people believed in humoral theory which was very complex like the vital force theory of homeopathy and the vata, pitta, kapha imbalance theory of Ayurveda. But using microscopes, we were able to identify germs. Germs enter our body and they cause diseases is a simpler explanation than the humoral theory. Modern doctors use a version of Occam's razor because they tend to look for the fewest possible causes to explain their patient's multiple symptoms and give preference to the most likely causes. For example, a person displaying influenza-like symptoms during the pandemic could be considered more likely to be suffering from COVID than an alternative rare disease. In software development, the rule of least power says the correct programming language to use is the one that is simplest while also solving the targeted software problem. So I hope that with these examples, you have understood the concept of Occam's razor. Although Occam's razor helped us to derive the scientific method, it is not considered an irrefutable logic or result. For that, we now depend on Karl Popper popping in the falsifiability theory. But it is not something that cannot be completely taken out of the method as well. The simpler a hypothesis is, the more easily it can be proven or falsified. A complex explanation for a phenomenon involves many factors which can be difficult to test or repeat. So when it comes to finding empirical evidences, other things being equal, simpler explanations are generally better than more complex ones. 
One crucial point is that Occam's razor should not be used in places where there are no evidence supporting a possibility just because it is simpler. Like if you look at the question, how did this universe come into being? The simpler solution would be that a god made it. But since there are no empirical evidence for that claim, it cannot be valid and sound, so using the Occam's razor is not possible. Here we need to use another razor called the Hitchens razor named after the great Christopher Hitchens. He stated that what can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. It implies that the burden of proof regarding the truthfulness of a claim lies with the one who makes the claim. If this burden is not met, then the claim is unproven and its opponents need not argue further in order to dismiss it. Occam's razor doesn't necessarily go with the simplest theory irrespective of whether it is right or wrong. It is not an example of simplicity for simplicity's sake. It merely tries to cut through the clutter to find the best theory based on the best scientific principles and knowledge at the time. Science prefers the simplest explanation that is consistent with the data available at a given time and the simplest explanation may be ruled out as new data becomes available. It is important to note that like any other mental model, Occam's razor is also not foolproof. This is especially crucial when it comes to important or risky decisions. There are exceptions to any rule and we should never blindly follow the results of applying a mental model where logic, experience or empirical evidence contradict. When you hear hoofbeats behind you, in most cases you should think horses, not zebras, unless you are out in the African savanna. So the next time you are faced with a problem, there is no need to make unnecessary, unwarranted explanations or conclusions. We have a tendency to think too much and arrive at complex solutions. So I hope when you are faced with the next problem in your life, think Occam's razor and look for the simplest solution. As Einstein is supposed to have said, everything should be kept as simple as possible, but not simpler. I hope you like this episode and learn something new. If so, please share it for the benefit of others. And subscribe if you want more content to feed your scientific temper. I shall be back soon. Until then, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.